Here we have ZBrush. What we're going to do now is import in the tree stump. So we're just going to import in tree stump .obj. And this should load in. I'm just going to drag it on the canvas and switch the matte cap to gray. Now as you can see here, this is the mesh that was generated from Autodesk Photo Scene Editor. It's pretty amazing that this was created from me simply walking around a tree stump and taking pictures at random. There was no process at all in how I took these pictures and it has compiled them into this thing that's really pretty detailed and pretty dense. Now one thing you, to notice about this uh, model here is that if we looked back at the textures it spit out, it spit out three textures. So what that means is when I import this in the ZBrush, it's basically got three poly groups already established. So if I turn on polyframes, you can see the three different colors this mesh is broken up into. Now why this is important is that we're going to have to split these polygroups apart in order to apply those three textures to each of them. If we try to apply the texture now to this model, it's not going to know which UV set to use, so it's just going to put one UV set across all of them and you're not going to end up with the tree stump that's nicely textured like it was in the photo scene editor. To do this, we're going to go to the subtool menu over here and we're just going to hit group split. And then it's going to pop up a dialog that says this is undoable. That's okay. We're just going to hit okay. And now we have this tree stump broken into three parts. So if you look at the parts, they're pretty much in shambles, but the textures know where to go, so we don't have to worry about that. So I'm just going to turn all these on, and now I'm going to load in the texture maps that the photo scene editor created. So we're going to go up here top to texture and go to import, old stump, and we're going to grab the three tree stump textures that are here. And these are going to load in. Now since these textures were created outside of ZBrush, there's one thing we have to do for these in order for them to load on the model. We have to flip vertical. So I'm just going to go through these textures and just hit this flip V button down here. So I got the first one selected, hit it, go to the second one, flip it, and go to the third one and flip it. Now these textures, I'm not really sure which one aligns with which polygroup. So I'm just going to come down here, I'm going to select one of these subtools and just go to solo. And then scroll down to the texture map tab, click the blank spot, and just pick one of these textures. So this one obviously is not the right texture for that subtool. So I'm going to try again and click the middle one. And this one looks like it lined up. You can see it's got the stumps where it looks like stumps should be, and it's got the mulch where it looks like mulch should be. So that one's good. Go to the second subtool, scroll down, do the same thing. We'll try this one. And this one looks like it was right. The third one was the winner. See the stumps there? It looks like it lines up. And now we're going to the third one and pick that last map, which should be the first one. And there you go, that one matches up too. So now if I unhit solo, you can see now we have the entire stump inside ZBrush with all the textures applied to it. So now we go back up to the first subtool. And from here we're going to need to bake this texture map into the geometry of the tool. Right now that subtool is only 378,000. So first we're going to come to geometry and we're going to divide this. Now I'm going to turn on solo just so you can see what happens here. If I click divide right now on this mesh that was shot out of Photo Scene Editor, you'll see it shards it into these fragments. So it's actually breaking it up along the seam lines where these UVs are. This is because the mesh wasn't welded. Now you could export this mesh out, weld it, you could use mirror and weld and weld it, you could group them all together and weld it, but that's all like pretty much a big pain to get, you know, just what you want out of this. The simple solution or fix for this is to first come over here to the geometry tab and just turn off SMT. Now when you hit divide, it's not going to try to smooth those edges out, so it's just going to add tessellation to the existing mesh. So right now, this section now has 2 million polygons. We're going to go to the second one. We're going to turn off SMT and divide that again. So that's at 759. And we'll go to the third one, turn off SMT, and divide that again as well. And that brings us up to 1.6. If we take solo off, our entire scene is roughly 5 million polygons. So now we have all these meshes, but each of these meshes are 
you know, related to a different texture map. Well, our goal here is to create a low resolution model from this tree. And to do that, we're going to have to make a cage or project this object onto another object. <clears throat> we're going to do the projection one. So we're going to come up here and first go to poly or go to poly paint, turn colorize on and do poly paint from texture. And you may get an error that says MRGB draw mode is off. Please adjust it. What that means is that I do not have RGB on up here. So if you come up to the RGB up here and turn it on and now hit poly paint from texture, you'll be able to transfer the texture map onto the poly painted layer of the actual object. So we'll go to the first stump, subtool the stump, and we're going to do the same thing. Poly paint from texture, and go to the middle one and do poly paint from texture again. Now I subdivided the separate subtools again so that I have enough polygons on the actual model to actually hold the resolution of these texture maps. If I would have not subdivided the models and then done the poly paint from texture, I would not have enough resolution on the mesh in order to get the details that I wanted. <clears throat>